last minute I drove from New York and the traffic was terrible. And um, my name is Misty Soul and I'm one half of the Teeny Tiny House Project. And so I'm here to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we're doing. But before we do that, I thought we might do a little group exercise to warm up. Now, um, it's probably going to be more for me than for you because you guys seem like you've been here talking a little bit. Um, but would you, would you do that with me? Okay. That's right. Okay, so I'll lead you. So you'll just have to follow me. We're all together, so nobody be shy. Okay, I'm going to make sure I hear everybody. So we start with an idea, and I'll start with, I'm going to build a tiny house for my family. Then you, I'm going to help you build. I'm going to build a tiny house and community. You again. I'm going to help you build. I'm going to build a tiny house for my family. I'm going to help you build. One more time. I'm going to help you build. I'm going to help you build. Thank you. Give yourselves a little hand. You guys are going to be great for us. Okay. So Paul and I are artists in the African-American tradition. And from that perspective, what we just did is improvisation. It's call and response. But along our journeys, we found these principles also reflected in farming. That's what we're doing when we put a seed in the soil and we trust that it's going to give us fruit. That's what we do as foragers when we trust in the inevitable abundance of our environments. And um, from a lifestyle design and entrepreneurial perspective, we call this action-based learning. You start with work from where you are with what you know, and you trust that you're going to find the next note, the next melody. You don't need to know the entire song. You just need to begin to sing. And trust that when you make a call, your community or your audience is going to help you carry the song. And so that's what our Teeny Tiny House Project is. It's us saying to the community, these are ideas. This is the next step in our improvisational journey. Will you help us carry the song? So just a little bit about us. Um, we're artists. Uh, we begin as performance artists and storytellers, musicians. Um, studying the blues tradition. Um, in 2009, we were working together in a graduate arts program, doing research on the blues migration and the hundreds of thousands of African Americans who came north to the northern states during and after World War II, of which my grandmother was one of those blues women. And um, through that metaphor of the blues, we found the themes that would tie together our fine art practice and our eco art practice. So this began to change our entire lives. We decided we wanted to learn to grow food, we wanted to learn to forage, we wanted to learn to compost, we wanted to learn to build, because we felt like these practices are humanizing and they're the panacea for all the isms that we deal with. So in 2013, when we were offered the opportunity to participate in an eco arts residency in the Royal Catskills in New York, we jumped at the opportunity. And so um, if you could see some of the pictures here, and I'll see if I can find some more to show you just really quickly. Um, so we spent two years there um, learning farming, learning um, natural building um, in the form of woodwork, woodworkers, metal workers, stone carvers. Um, we learned farming. We deepened our practice of foraging. I'm sorry, I wasn't sure how we were going to have. And um, we just learned so much. But one thing that kind of, a question that kind of stayed in my mind um, as a beginning emerging eco artist was a phrase that I had heard, a statement that I heard during a um, graduate seminar about eco art. And it was stated that eco art is about an artist's connection to a sense of place and space. And this wasn't my land. Even though it was a long-term residency, I knew that eventually it would be over. And so I was concerned with how we would continue our eco-practice um, without land, with um, being mobile, being um, nomadic. 
And we thought again about that blues metaphor that we've been using. And uh, I thought about what my granny had done when she came here in the 1930s. First thing she did is made um, connections with local farmers and she built herself a tiny house. Let me see if I can find that here. I'm just gonna go through some of the, so we spent, these are the glass doors that we found. Um, about a year and a half ago, we decided that tiny house was really the way to go. We had been interested in earth building. And uh, I'll show you maybe some of the stuff that we build. That's us as musicians. That's us um, doing some earth building. That's the cognizant that we're doing with our family. But um, even though I think, and that's another window that we collected, even though I love earth building and I'd like one day to be able to do that, without land, it's not really feasible. And so tiny house seemed like the perfect solution for us as foragers. We already knew about salvaging, repurposing. And so we collected all the doors and the windows and most of the wood that we would need for the build. And so we found ourselves um, <clears throat> kind of at the end of our own resources. And the teeny house campaign was us presenting our idea to the community. That's my daughter sitting with the stuff. That's us on the farm there. Okay, so let me see if I can find the plans for the tiny house. Okay, so um, these, this is the basic um, specs that we worked with. We found some free plans online and we reworked them. The little character you see there, um, that's Teen. That's our tiny house mascot. And um, she's going to narrate the tiny house guide that we're working on as a part of the campaign. Um, that's one of the perks that we're going to be sending out. And then, um, let's see, what, is this our first floor plans right here? I'm going to make those bigger so you can see them. Um, we went with a real simple plan here. Um, as you can see, the bathroom, kitchen, huge family room space. Um, we would have lofts up here. I'm sure all you tiny house people are familiar with uh, that process. And now I'm trying to get out of here. Um, so then my partner and I decided that we absolutely did not want um, the bathroom next to the kitchen. And so then we came up with this. Um, with the bathroom back here and the kitchen at the other end. And so that we have all this space here. Um, and of course, we uh, planned in two loft spaces on a second floor that Teeny's pointing to here, a six, two six by sixes. And those are the, the basic plans that we uh, presented to the community. Now the goal of our campaign was to, um, we came up with a budget of about $9,000. We came up with that using um, some specs that we had found for a tiny house, but then taking into account um, all the materials that we already had and our ability to find things at a discount, and that's the number that we came up with. So the goal was to raise the money, but it wasn't just about the money. It was about beginning a conversation about um, sustainability, about this option. Um, I know that there are tiny house communities and there are small groups all over the place, but when, um, when we launched this, I got a lot of feedback from artists who hadn't heard of this. Um, other people who wanted to do it, I had um, an artist colleague of mine, a single mother, she contributed and she said, I really want to see you do this because you know my family and I would like to do this. Unfortunately, I had an artist contact me and say she would love to, but she felt like the cost was prohibitive and this is something that rich people do in their spare time. Um, and we decided for ourselves that money was not going to be a barrier to us entering the conversation. And um, part of what we're doing is trying to let other people know that money doesn't have to be a barrier to them entering the conversation either. So um, as artists, it's really about us seeing the art in this. Um, we feel like that's what artists do. They step out to the edge of people's expectations and what they're used to, and they take a look, and then they call back to the others and say, come look, it's safe. Or maybe it's not, but in any case, 
where we're going to do this experiment to say, look, we're willing to live like this. We're willing to try this. What do you think? So, um, what else did I want to tell you uh, about um, how we've been running the campaign? We're about halfway through, and we've raised about a tenth of what we set out to raise, which is great in a way, um, because we get to continue the campaign and let people see us in action. Um, we've got enough to put a down payment on an RV that we're going to rehab instead of buying the trailer, and that's also going to save us thousands of dollars with the build. And I've really been enjoying you know, the contact and the feedback that I've gotten from people. And we've just gotten a really positive response. There were a few more pictures I wanted to show you, but I'm having technical difficulties. So, yeah, that's our tiny house project. It's the beginning of the melody, and so we're just interested to see how we're all going to carry the song. Um, we've got some bigger ideas than just um, us and what we can do with this personally as a family. Um, as artists, we've always been really involved in teaching the skills that we learn. And so I can really see the possibility in this um, as an <coughs> artist residency. Um, and that's kind of how I conceived it, that we would do the build as a community build and try to um, make connections with um, arts organizations, green organizations, and nonprofits in the city and take advantage of the connections that we already have and make new ones. Um, I think that we have real potential for what um, tiny houses can be in, in neighborhoods. Um, anything from libraries to dwellings to, um, to uh, just studios. Uh, we're excited to see what the possibilities are and continue the conversation. So that's it.